So gentlemen, welcome back. Episode five, Roads the Most Disciplined Man. Now today we're discussing a few interesting topics. First and foremost, a gadget that's currently in my pocket that has gifted me perhaps the most disciplined day I've had so far on this journey. A huge decision I have to make regarding the bane of my existence and also the downfall of Western society dissipating around us as we know it. But first and foremost, you may have noticed by the background I'm in a play park. I feel like every single fucking video, video I have to say that I'm not a paedophile, but I'm not a paedophile, all right? It's fucking long. Why do I have to say this every video? Every single video. It's just the only place where I can set up the fucking tripod. Oh, it's long. But you boys know. You boys know. <sighs> right, anyways. So like I said, there's been a gadget which has uh, gifted me the most productive day thus far on this journey. You might be wondering what it is. What is it, you know? It costs me about three quid. I'll show you it now without further ado. And it's this timer. Little timer costing about three quid on Amazon. Oh, sorry, mate. It's clearly done with my shit. Um, it's, it's literally cost me three quid and it's given me the most productive day I've done so far. I mean, now why is that, okay? So I like to take the piss a bit. You know, my morning routine, for example, is literally just me. Some salt water, uh, some uh, in the sun, then a, then a cold shower, weigh in, that's about it really. But with this, that allows me to actually keep that nice and disciplined, nice and quick. And that's the thing, when you look at like a whole day holistically, like the whole day you've got to do, defeat all these battles, you've got to stay off your phone, you've got to work for fucking six hours, you've got to do all the shit, you've got to get in your year seven cardio, you've got to do everything, right? It seems so, it, it seems so large and indefeatable. It seems like a boss, you know, in a video game. Whereas what this helps you do is just to cut up into tiny portions. It's like on a run, you know. If you've ever done a marathon or a long distance run, you don't think, fucking hell, I can't wait for the extra 43 kilometers of this run. You think, you know what? I'm, I'm just excited to make it to that lamppost over there, right? And that's what this does because you, have, you set a little timer throughout your day to keep on task. So all you're thinking about is beating this timer and managing and getting the shit done before this timer. And consequently, I've actually got a bit of work done today. Ah, fuck it hell. It's taking until episode five of the most disciplined man to actually get a bit of work done. Oh, sorry, excuse the train in the background. I'm not talking about orgy here, though. Fuck. Uh, anyway, so yeah, man. Honestly, boys, I really would recommend you getting one of these. And also, you might think, why not just use your phone, right? Well, I'll tell you what happens when you use your phone, right? You're thinking, oh, I'm about to hop, hop in the cold shower. Why don't I use my phone? All of, all of a sudden, your fucking fingers navigate its way to porno without even fucking thinking. You can't use your phone for anything. Actually, no, that's sorry. Let me rephrase that. Outsource anything you use your phone for uh, that is actually like, you know, useful for example calculator timer all this stuff because as soon as you use your phone for it well, you're just mindlessly addicted to your phone you'll just navigate your way to porn up or like if you're my friend seven gay porn whatever it is man so yeah and, and it keeps you off your phone i literally just ignore my phone for most of the day and i have done today this is really the first time i've been on it and that's nothing to do with having zero women on my snapchat either anyway uh like i said big decision big big decision so i decided that I'm going to quit drinking, officially quit drinking. Now it's funny enough because I've been flirting with the idea of quitting drinking and I've never really said it like that in concrete because I kind of intrinsically knew that I wouldn't stick to it. So, and I, you know, I really want to be a man, man of my word, you know, I don't want to just say some shit, you know, like, um, I don't know, I'm going to shag Megan Fox because it's not going to happen, right? I did watch Transformers last night, if you, you know, in case you're asking. Anyway, I'm not, not talking about transgenders either. Sorry. Anyway, so I need to be a man of my words. So this is why I'm saying it this to you right now, you, me, the boys, right? I will not drink for, I'm going to say three months. And then after the three months, like, like when you reach that lamppost uh, on the run, I'll probably continue it a bit longer, but you know, we'll see. Now you might be thinking, why? And truth be told, like every man has his vice, every man has his weakness. And my weakness is drinking. It really is. I mean, literally, the reason why I've not, be, not reached like peak productivity right now on this, on this series is purely because of alcohol. Obviously, because of my own inadequacies, I'm the one drinking it. It's not just some exogenous substance dictating my life, but it is my fault, ultimately, because I keep on choosing to drink. And then what will happen is you'll slowly build in the routine, build the momentum, build the momentum, and then bang, on Saturday, Friday, whatever, you're going to fucking piss up with the boys up till 4 a.m., you know... Um, you're trying to list as many synonyms for vagina at 4am, drunk, whatever you can do. And I can list a fair few. So you used to probably stay up till 5am. 
But that's the thing, man. And that just ruins your momentum, kills your momentum. And you've got to restart the next week. And then you start it and you're waking up at fucking one. And then you're trying to be disciplined. And then it's such a mental drain. And it's the main source of my unhappiness at the minute. And it's really the limiting factor in my life right now. In terms of health, in terms of finance, in terms of... I don't want to say women because... You know, we've got other fa- <laughs> we've got other limiting factors for that, <laughs> but yeah, it is the limiting factor and the bane of my existence currently. So it's going to need to be cut out, really. It's going to need to be cut out. And my plan of action is to have a last supper, if you will. The last supper. I'm sure you know what the last supper is. You know, Jesus holding up the bread. Except in this case, it's going to be a can of Fosters. Um, on on Friday, we've got some of the boys coming down a big house party. So that's going to be my next episode, by the way. Little cheeky, um, little cheeky. Uh, preview we'll say and yeah so uh, that's going to be the last time i drink for the next three months and then from then on we'll see and i'm really i'm quite excited for this uh, because i've been waiting to have some kind of commitment because now i've got to stick to it now i'll say this shit i've got to do it so i'm really excited for how far we can go and how how much we can turn the dial in terms of discipline and etc and obviously you boys are coming coming along with me so man this is gonna be a pleasure so i won't be quite alone because that's the thing i'm gonna miss out on so much shit but you know what it is I'll miss out on shit, some shit now to have plenty of more shit later. Not talking about feces there, by the way. Um, but yeah, so I'm... Well, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm really excited because it's, like I said, it's been the main source of uh, mental anguish for me recently is just, you know, not you're not fulfilling my potential ultimately due to drinking. So, yeah, it, I think it's... Um, oh, man, mate. It's really important that I cut this out. And in fact, it's paramount that I cut this out. And yeah, so uh, that's it, cutting out drinking. Buy a fucking timer, costs like three quid. Changes your discipline, changes everything. And I don't really think I have much more to cover with you boys. I mean, obviously I'm going to talk about the downfall of Western society. Honestly, I've, some of the ideas that I've um, collected, they, they aren't my ideas specifically. I mean, obviously I add my own little bits here and there, but some of the ideas about society will blow your mind later. So stay tuned for them, boys. But yeah, I think um, today I've just got up, I've just done some work and you know, ticked all the boxes. I had some food, I'll put it on the screen here. Um, and yes, yeah, it's, it's been fucking good, man. Fucking good. Like honestly, there's nothing more beautiful than just getting shit done, man. That feeling of satisfaction of just like, yeah, yeah, we smashed it today. We smashed it today. And obviously, not talking, not talking about smashing women because we haven't smashed women today. But um, yeah, man. So I'll, I'll catch you boys later. I've got some distinct theories later. Distinct theories. I'm very excited to divulge you with you, with you young gentlemen. So uh, oh, don't you care? The local row men are approaching. So. Um, yeah, before I get arrested again, because I always, for some reason, have to end a segment with, with saying before I get arrested, like, why can I not just be an innocent man? Why do I have to film in... Yeah, man, actually, I might, I might go on that slide, actually, in a second. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, before I get assaulted by a biker gang, um, I'll see you boys in a bit. <clears throat> so, gentlemen, we have gathered here today to discuss the downfall of Western society. But first and foremost, for dinner... <laughs> I've uh, I've got some mint, some bacon, some gluten-free pasta. It's only got a couple of ingredients in. If you're if you're at Aldi, I'll put it on screen now. Get this gluten-free pasta. Avoid the P1 though. That's pretty shit. It's super high in protein. It's like 50 gram protein just in the pasta, mints. I think I already said that. Broccoli, onion, pepper, and also for a nice, actually healthy sauce. Right. This has got this is about one pound seventy-five. It's got about two portions in. And no seed oils, because the things with most pestos, they're just like full of rapeseed oil. But this is literally just uh, extra virgin olive oil, sun-dried tomatoes, basil, um, you know, and Italian cheeses and pine nuts. That's it. That's literally it. So get this, seed oil free, takes two seconds to make. And I'm going to try to describe the downfall of Western society to you before my dinner gets cold. Right, so first and foremost, you're looking at the table. What do we have here? Let's start with this lovely little illustration. Let me see if you can get a good look at that there. I'll take a photo and put it on screen just for reference. So what does this mean? Now, I, I admittedly, this, like I said, this is not an, entirely my idea. This is the idea of a man named Balaji. I can't pronounce his second name. I'll put it on screen here. I listen to it in a podcast. I'll put the podcast in the link description if you're interested. It's a, it's a mental challenge. It really is. The guy's scarily intelligent. Regardless, so this is the three types of oppression which we see from modern day society. And a lot of people in, in you know Western society think we aren't oppressed, but listen on and you'll see. 
So first and foremost, you have communist, you know, your communist type of oppression, which is very much the government has power, you don't submit. That's what you've got to do. That, that, that's all, you know. They're very over, they're very, very open about their, how uh, they oppress you. You can't do this, abide by the government, or else you'll go missing, or whatever, whatever the consequences are. You know what the consequences are. So that's very blatant, you know. The person ends up, you know, eyes down, shoulders hunched over, submissive position, right? Whereas what you've got here, I'm sorry, you can see the hammer and sickle there for like the communist type of oppression. And what you've got here is, um, so you've got the sympathise, which is what we have in Western society. So, for example, Great Britain, or as I like to call it, not so Great Britain, or these days anyway, it's a shame. We're more of a woke society. So the way we, we operate isn't overtly, we have the power, the, the government has the power, you have to bend to our will. What we say is, conversely actually, it's the person who has the power, but therefore the person is the oppressor, okay? So, um, and you know, if you look at the, uh, the algebra of intersectionality, right, and that's basically fancy terms of saying everyone is either white, male, but, uh, sorry, heterosexual, cisgender, whatever it is, someone can be considered an oppressor on some sort of axis. So what, it's, what you know, woke society says is that you have the power, therefore you are the oppressor. So if you don't want to be labelled an oppressor, you have to sympathise with our uh, ideologies. And it, it, you see this frequently, frequently throughout our, our society. And that's the thing, people say we aren't oppressed, so what happens to people who speak out against the uh, political propagandas from the government? For example, people who speak out against LGBTQ, people who speak about, about a COVID, what happens to them? They all seem to um, lose their jobs, don't they? It's kind of weird. Um, and see, you see the two differences between these two societies is that this is, here, this is very interesting. So this has a state-controlled press. Communist um, society has state-controlled press, whereas we have a press-controlled state. So, for example, in the state-controlled press, a member of the government could get a journalist fired, but not vice versa, whereas in the press-controlled state, a journalist could get a, um, a government member fired, but not vice versa. So you see what I'm trying to say here. And you see, uh, because I was uh, in writing in black, I couldn't put an LGBTQ flag, so I just settled for a United badge, you know. I think it does the job sufficiently. So, yeah, and that's the thing. When you, when you are forced to sympathise with the government's ideologies or be labelled an oppressor and have your card revoked as such, you still end up in that same position, eyes downwards, hunched over. You're still subservient to the government's ideologies. It's just a, a less overt means of manufacturing oppression. So you are still oppressed very much. And you and now now I'm saying this, if you're catching what I'm saying and I'm not just completely waffling, you, you, you will see it, you know. You can see it across the board, you know. People who speak out against the government's regime, not to name any names, but I'll name them later. Um, they are, you know, cancelled. There we go. There's the term. And you see here third. Now, this is a very autistic drawing. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, just, just, just have a look at that drawing. See if you can recognise it. It's like the Down syndrome version of the, version of the Chad meme. Uh, I try my best, all right. I try my best. Uh, and the third point of the triangle as such is sovereign, is being sovereign. Now, what does that mean? Because we have crypto these days, that has unlocked the ability to go off the grid. You don't have to be, you don't have to respond to banks anymore. Because of crypto, um, it's, it's kind of like, oh, I, I don't know what the word is. It's like overpowered currency almost, like uh, undercut currency is probably a better term. So now you can go off the grid, and that's the third option, being able to go off the grid, you know, um, being self-sufficient, farm, uh, making everything yourself, all the food yourself, solar-powered energy, and that is being sovereign, so constant caution. So that's the other and that is rejecting all oppression, you know, as opposed to like eyes down, hunched over, you're standing tall with your jaw square, facing everything, but denying all oppression. So you either get oppressed overtly by the government, covertly by the government, or not at all, and you reject it all, and you reject all society. And so reject all society is constant caution, um, and for woke society, it's coerced compassion, and for communist society, it's communist control. So those are the three types of oppression. And you might be thinking, that sounds awful, right? But the thing is, all three of these have their uses. So for example, with communist control, like you can't just reject all kind of, uh, you know, 
coercion from the government whatsoever. You can't reject all control from the government because because then you have anarchy. So you do need some of that. The, and then, so you know, to sympathise, obviously, oh, like I said, with communist control, it goes completely too far when you when you go to the edges of the triangle. You know, where people have no free will whatsoever. But and then with um, woke society, is that uh, we have maxed out the sympathise stat. So. You know, and you need a, um, a nation that can sympathise because otherwise you don't have charity. You know, what happens to disabled people if no one sympathises? You need, you do need sympathising to a degree. However, when it goes too far, you have 50-year-old blokes who are dressing up in dresses to get into girls' changing rooms because they don't feel safe in their body, whatever. They're a middle-aged bloke, for fuck's sake. And that's what happens when you go too far, which is what we see in not-so-Great Britain. Uh, and then sovereign. Sovereign, it sounds fantastic, doesn't it? You know, goff in the hills, caveman mode. I've done it myself, actually. It wasn't as good as you thought, you'd think. But the thing is, that's great until, you know, bring it back to our friend, the timer here. This is this cost me £3. I could never make this from scratch if I wanted to. And the thing is, when you're sovereign, you don't have division of labour. So and division of labour is great because you get people who specialise in certain things. So therefore, like I said, people can make me that timer. That can be fine. I can make the villagers butter. Someone else can be the... Um, be the irons, the smith, whatever. That's what I'm saying. Everyone has the allocated roles. And then, therefore, technological advance, advancement, that is not great for it. And neither is complete control, you know, because people can't really chase their passions or anything, or coerce compassion, because everyone's gay. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's um, a little explanation as to the three types of oppression and why we actually do live in quite an oppressed state, which people don't realise. Very interesting. But you will notice, um, obviously, this one's a bit more of an outlier, but a key contradiction or opponent of these two ideologies is a little, a little thing called freedom of speech. Now, I'm just going to check I'm still recording, just so I can continue. Brilliant, still recording, apologies. So this, is, this brings these pencils into the equation. And with these pencils, I'm going to prove to you why we need freedom of speech. So as we see here, we see the pencils. These pencils represent the radical left. These pencils represent the radical left, radical right, sorry. And this this pencil represents the the middle. Because what you have to realise is mathematically, right? Obviously, some stuff uh, the right's gonna, the right's going to be more correct in. Some stuff the left's going to be more correct in. But mathematically, if you average it out, the truth is always going to be in the middle, right? It's going to be in the middle, right? For you know generally over all issues it's going to average out to be the middle and what you have here is the political consensus right this represents the political consensus but say and this this is a perfect functioning society where we have freedom of speech and you, as you can see the political cons consensus aligns with what's truth the truth basically but what happens is when cancellation comes about as aforementioned and freedom of speech is declined oh Sorry, Andrew Tate. Women can't drive. Off you go, mate. What was that, Russell Brand? What? Pfizer made 100 billion in profit in 2022. <laughs> Don't you fucking dare. And as you can see, the radical right has been cancelled. Or, no, the far right, whatever you want to call it, right? When, the, when that is silenced, then you'll notice something. Because the right isn't, you know, isn't given freedom of speech, the political consensus veers to the left which is what you see in modern day society. And you'll notice something, is that as it's veered to the left, it's veered from the truth, right? It's veered from the truth. So therefore, and this also means, you know, say if, say if you're a diligent young man, and uh, so that's what I'm saying, the political consensus these days is very much, it's not middle anymore, it's not middle, it's actually, it's, it's quite left wing, it's slightly left wing. So if you're a diligent young man, and you don't think there's two genders, you just like going to the gym, whatever, you're probably somewhere around the middle like me. But because the middle has now shifted, the political consensus has now shifted, you are now perceived to be right wing. Like the Nazis are over here, but because you like you think there's two genders and the society politically, the political consensus of society is shifted towards the left, you are now seen to be right wing. And this is why freedom of speech is so important, man. Because regardless of whether you're right or left wing, or sorry, I'm going to use these, I've run out of pencils. That's the political contents now. So bringing back um, Andrew Tate and Russell Brandt into it. This is why it's so important to allow all opinions. Like, like I said, you know, I'm sure you've clocked on, I might not agree with the LGBTQ movement, but I still believe it's very important for them to have a voice. Because just as 
um, the far right might be right on some issues. So is the far left. Like I said, like I said in my previous point, being able to sympathise is very important in society, you know. And um, the, the far right isn't completely right, neither is the far left. So it's very important to have a very balanced um, plethora of opinions throughout society in order to seek further truth, just so the truth can align with political consensus. And this is why freedom of speech is utterly paramount, I believe, utterly paramount. So I hope you liked uh, my little demonstration with pencils there. And um, I hope I did it justice as well. I really do. Because I think, it's, I think it's a very interesting concept. And I don't know why so many people can't clock it. And uh, yeah. And also, also on a side note, all this shit aside, man. I've just seen on Twitter that um, Tucker Carlson is interviewing Vladimir Putin. So I urge you all to watch that. I believe it's out Thursday, 6pm. I believe on X. So, um, I mean, if you don't know who Tucker Carlson is, he's a... I believe he worked at Fox News as a journalist, but um, I'm not sure. I think he left after seeing all the corruption there. And since then, he's just been going around doing his own thing. Fox News thought he'd flop after him lose, losing, but he gets bigger. He gets more views than they are now. And it's the point where he's interviewing Vladimir Putin. And it'll be very interesting to see what that has to say, because I don't think we've really heard much from the Russian point of view this entire time. So I urge you all in the name of free speech to give that a listen to. And I think... Although, you know, you form your own opinion, as, as will I, I think it's pretty inevitable because they, they've already tried to sanction him and they've already tried to block his flight back home, I think. So uh, I think that's European Union. I'll put on screen to correct myself because I feel like I'm wrong there. But he has already been sanctioned uh, for even having that interview, which is crazy to me. So I think that interview is going to open a lot of eyes. So I encourage you to watch that and form your own opinion on the matter, as will I, because I'm very interested. Because, like I said, it's been a very one-way stream with the Ukraine-Russia war. But regardless, man, all on that front, man, all, all I'll do is pray for the victims. I, I'm not here to voice any opinions on any war, man. No, all I'll do is pray for the victims. But, yeah, watch that interview. And, yeah, tonight, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little thing. Oh, again, boys, you think I'm chatting shit or you disagree with me on any kind of thing, please feel free. Go at me in the comments by any means. Go at me. Because that's, that's for growth, right? That's what I'm saying, like with freedom of speech like I don't mind the left fucking going at me because that might you know that might poke holes in my argument but and you know if you can poke a hole in an argument it's not it's not a solid argument you know so that's what I'm saying in order to reach truth we need that we need that we need those discussions we need to encourage discussions like that we need to be able to hear both sides of the argument they're both very important man even if you disagree with them because there is nothing harder than hearing fucking someone waffle on about something you disagree with I know like so, uh, so social media is so politically polarised nowadays you can't go on Twitter without fucking seething how are the kids being taught this in schools and all this but you've got to put that aside man you've got to put emotions aside because it's not for the betterment of knowledge really but yeah boys uh, anyway I've, I've really enjoyed that I would say it's a, discussion, it's a discussion with you boys it really is so again let me know and tonight I'm just going to eat my dinner which is most certainly cold now uh, I don't know, to be fair, I was cooking now, so maybe a bit of heat went, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. But I've, got, I've always got to ruin it. I've always got to ruin it. But yeah, man, uh, I think, like I said, I'll just eat that, get some work done. I'll, you know, stretch, meditate, pray, go to bed, man. That's the, beauty of, that's the beauty of the game, man. That's the beauty of the game. So, gentlemen, really do appreciate you watching. Much love, man, much love. Like I said, man, I've got high into this YouTube channel. Every single one of you that's watching now, I will not forget you, boys. I will not forget you. And, uh, man, yeah, man, it's a pleasure. Stay present, gentlemen. <laughs>